Hello. In this demo, we will be using Metasploitable, an intentionally insecure Linux distribution specifically tailored to the Metasploit framework. It features exploitable services and weak logins. In this demo, we will be using nmap to discover what services are running on the system, use Metasploit exploit modules to attack vulnerable services, use Metasploit auxiliary modules to brute force services with logins. So I have my Metasploitable VM and my Backtrack VM loaded up and ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is run an nmap scan against that Metasploitable VM. Um, for the scan, I'm going to be using nmap with a TCP connect flag, uh, the service version flag, and OS detection flag, and I'm going to be scanning ports 1 through 10,000 at the fastest nmap can scan at. So I'm going to run that, and it should take a little less than 30 seconds, maybe a like 15, 20. Okay. So from the scan, we can see that it's a Linux box, and it's running a couple of HTTP services here and here. So we can check those out in a web browser. So let's open up Firefox and check them out. So we're going to put in our Metasploitable IP and then check out. So on port 80 we got nothing immediately interesting on port 80. So let's check out 8180. Just as nmap identified, Apache Tomcat is running on this port. Maybe there's a little bit more to port 80, so we can do, let's go do a little bit of snooping. So, Durbuster is the tool I'm going to be using. Durbuster is a tool that brute forces directory structures from a word list, so let's give it a try. It's made by OWASP. So that would be... So that's going to run Durbuster. And you're going to type in the URL, which is your Metasploitable IP address in the port. We're going to be using port 80. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to be using a word list called directory list 2.3 big and that's in the same directory as Durbuster. We're going to start it. This should take a couple minutes, but let's see what it finds. So that looks interesting. Take you a key. Let's open that up in a browser. Hmm. So it turns out the uninteresting web server isn't all that uninteresting. Now let's see if we can put this knowledge to use in that So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to close out of a wasp. Dirt buster. And I'm going to hop into the Metasploit framework console. So let's search Metasploit's modules and see what we can do with TikiWiki. So let's search TikiWiki. Okay, there are a couple of results. Let's first try the information disclosure one and see what it yields. Let's 
So use. Now we're going to type in show options. And it looks like we need an R host. So let's set R host and the IP of our Metasploitable VM. And then that should be it. You should be able to run that. And nice. We got DB credentials, and it doesn't look like we'll have to deal with the restrictions as it's running under the root account. Let's try another. How about graph formula exec? Let's see if we can get a shell from it. So I'm going to copy this and use it. And now we're going to show options. And it looks just the same as the auxiliary module we used. So set the R host as the metasploitable IP address. But since this is an exploit, we need a payload. So let's set our payload as a PHP interpreter payload. And we're going to use a reverse TCP shell. And then since we have a payload now, we've got to set a listening host, which will be our backtrack IP address. From there, just run the exploit. Success. We have, a, we have a interpreter shell. But for now, let's background it. So you want to control Z to background, hit Y, and you're good. Um, recall that Apache Tomcat is running on port 8180. Let's see what Metasploit has for us for Tomcat. So let's search Tomcat. Let's log me out a couple things. Looking through the results. I mean, there's a scanner, so let's use that, that auxiliary scanner. So we're going to be doing the manager login utility. So I'm going to copy that, use that, and then I'm going to show options. And it looks like there is a lot of options. Luckily for us, most of the defaults can be used and the only thing we really need here is the R host and the R port to be changed. So let's set our R hosts to our metasploitable VM IP address and let's set our R port to 8180 which is what Tomcat is running on the metasploitable box. And let's run the exploit. And the scanner is going to read through all of it and let's see. Ah, right here. Looks like there was a successful login with Tomcat and user password. It's the same word. So user Tomcat, password Tomcat. Now let's put that login to use. So back at our search Tomcat, there was an exploit uh, for HTTP called Tomcat Manager Deploy. So let's use that. So it's going to be use exploit multi HTTP Tomcat manager deploy show options so it needs a username a password an R port and an R host so let's set our host to our exploitable IP address let's set username tomcat let's set password to tomcat set the r port to 8180 and then from there we need a payload because like the first exploit it's the same thing every exploit needs a payload so let's set the payload to java interpreter and we're going to do another reverse TCP shell. And then we're just going to exploit. Oh, again, we need to set an L host for our payload. So 
set L host to our backtrack IP and then we're going to exploit. So it's going to be using the username and the password and there's another shell. Now let's assume we weren't successful with the web servers. So let's background this again. So that's two we have two sessions, but let's pretend that they never actually happened. So for sake of the demo, let's make some tiny word lists. In a terminal, we're going to pop open another terminal. And I'm going to nano users.txt. I already have this made up for demo purposes, but we're going to have a few usernames. Admin, administrator, mysql, root, msf, admin. And I'm going to exit out of that, and then I'm going to nano passwords.txt. And it's a password list. Admin, administrator, MySQL, root, password, pass, MSF, admin. So, like I said, for demo services, I already have these made up. And it has a MySQL server that might be exploitable. So, in Metasploit, let's use the MySQL login module, it's an auxiliary module, so use auxiliary scanner MySQL MySQL login. So we're going to set the R host to our metasploitable IP again and we're going to set the user file to root users.txt. We're going to set the pass file to root passwords.txt. Then we're just going to run it. And oh, I messed up again. Instead of our host, it's our hosts. So you're going to set up our hosts as your metasploitable. Then you're going to run it. What this is going to do is it's going to run through the passwords and try them all. And it looks like root root worked. So, as we predicted, the sexual module was using root root combination. In a separate terminal, let's log into the MySQL server as root and execute some commands. So that's going to be MySQL, and the host is going to be our metasploitable IP address. And then the user is going to be root and prompt us for a password. Password's going to be root and boom. We're in MySQL shell. But we can do a bit more than launch database queries. Let's try to do a select load file. And then let's do an Etsy password. And look at that. Well, now we know all the user accounts in the system. Let's exit the shell because there's one account that doesn't quite look right, and that's MSF admin because it's not really doesn't belong to a service. So let's add it to our word lists. As you saw before, it's already in my word lists. So it is running an SSH server. If we can use a word list with that MSF admin in there to our advantage. So let's search SSH on Metasploit and it looks like there is an SSH login scanner right here. So let's use it and then we're going to set our R hosts to 192.168.75.248, which is my metasploitable IP. We're going to set the user file as root users.txt. We're going to set the pass file to root passwords.txt. And then we're just going to run it. And it's going to do the exact same thing as it did with the SQL. It's going to try all the username and password combinations. And it'll take a little bit, but as you can see,
we already found one, MSF admin with password MSF admin. So we can actually SSH into Metasploitable now. So SSH MSF admin at our Metasploitable IP address. And then we're going to be hitting enter. And then MSF admin is the password, just like it said. And there you go. So let's see what we can do. Let's uh, cats and Etsy shadow. Hmm. It says permissions denied, but maybe since it does have the name of MSF admin, maybe it's a sudoer. And let's see if we can sudo cat Etsy shadow. Your password. Throw in his password, and there you go. So we have SSH in our control. We have SQL, MySQL in our control. And we have two more HTTP, HTTP services in our control. That would be Apache and Tomcat. Let's try one more exploit, disk CCD. So let's search, let's search for uh, Dis CC. And we have one daemon command execution. So dist is meant to allow C to be compiled remotely. It also allows us to execute code remotely if restrictions aren't in place. So let's give it a try. So let's use that exploit. And then let's set a payload. And we're just going to use a regular command unix reverse shell. So let's set our R host to 192, 168.175.248, which is my metasplitable IP. It's going to be different for you, of course. And then we're going to set our L host, what's your listening host, to our backtrack. IP address. And from there, we'll be able to run an exploit. And you're now going to have a daemon shell. Well, shell as a daemon, meaning sometimes that you're not going to actually get a prompt. So you're going to be thinking, hey, this is hung up. This is hung up. I'm not getting a shell. But in reality, you are getting a shell. You just can't see the prompt. But it's there. So if you cat and Etsy shadow, permission not, but if you sudo cat Etsy shadow, and then it should just be Damon. Not 100% sure on that. Okay, well, fact is you have a Damon shell. So you now have four sessions in your metasploitable box.